Welcome to Style with Trish. We are here on location in Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, for my photo shoot where I get to work with the Finkley Brothers. They're coming right up, so stay tuned. Oh, that looks good. Uh huh. One, two, three. Beautiful. And again. One, two, three. Up next, we have Calvin Finkley. Welcome back to Style with Trish. I'm your host, Trish Stanley, and I'm sitting down with long time, long time uh, uh, the photographer, my branding, he's done my branding, CD covers, none other than the ultimate uh -huh. himself, <laughs> the ultimate himself, uh -huh. Calvin Finkley. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I brag about you all the time. Oh, um, I do a lot of photo shoots, <laughs> as people say. Um, and I, I, I like doing different photographers because the different photographers bring out different things. Yep. Or they can or they mm -hmm. should. Mm -hmm. um, but when I want to do the va va boom stuff. Come on. <laughs> you're the man. You a little extra, you know. <laughs> I like to be a little extra, but I definitely appreciate you for all these years of support. It's been so long. Yeah, like, it has. It's it has. been more than five years. Yeah, it has. <laughs> well, you know, we had COVID, so that added oh, on. Oh yeah, that years. added on. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> but I always enjoy uh, working with you. You're so free, um, you. and you you make your clients feel comfortable. What started you, and what made you want to go into photography? So the thing that made me want to go into photography, I went to school for graphic design. So graphic okay. design is like, that was like my bread and butter. But mm -hmm. I started editing everybody else's photos. Mm. So my thing is, Calvin, go ahead and learn how to, you know, do photography on your own so you can mm -hmm. edit your own photos. Mm -hmm. So I stepped out, leaped out on faith and literally just bought a camera, didn't know what I was doing, mm -hmm. didn't know anything about photography and just kind of, you know, started learning from there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was 2012. Maybe wow. 2012, mm -hmm. and to God be the glory, I'm a full time photographer now. Um, I do graphic design here and there, but like my bread and butter really switched from graphic design to photography, mm -hmm. all off of leaping and stepping out on faith. Yeah, and your gra to me, your graphics are really like above a lot of oh, people you. that thank are you. out here. So I was, I, it's kind of surprising oh, to hear you kind of stepping away from that, but um, or not doing as much. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Starting with graphic design and then maneuvering into photography, one of the things that I love about you as well is that um, you guys go follow him on social media, I promise you. Uh, you would give lessons for people just oh, like you yes. who just learning from scratch. How yes. was that ex experience? Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is... And it's so funny you mentioned it. I am actually working on another workshop. So pre-COVID, mm -hmm. I was doing photography workshops. It would mm -hmm. be a small group of about four. The last one was five. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just so I can be hands-on. I don't want a big group. I mm -hmm. like to be hands-on. So mm -hmm. we'll come together. I teach photograph photography. And we actually do photo shoots. Okay. So we do photo shoots there. So not only are they learning about lighting, the business of photography, all that other stuff, but they're actually going home with mm -hmm. portfolio images that they can use to promote oh, cool. their brand and promote their business okay. and so that's what I really love now so I, I kind of want to pivot a little more into doing more teaching mm -hmm. and workshops versus mm -hmm. just 
photo shoots because I love to give back and pour into other people. No matter what it is, I don't care if I learn how to make a chicken dish. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. Right. Like, you know, because I just love teaching. Yeah. It's in me to teach yeah. others, you know, the That's different things. I, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I kind of, um, you know, I'm kind of switching a little more or trying to switch more into mm-hmm. doing more workshops and mm-hmm. more one-on-one photography lessons. That's awesome. Um, we were talking off off camera and you were uh, sharing with us your transition. Yes. Going from uh, a regular nine to five Ooh. into doing this full time. Share, share that with our audience. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. I've worked at wing shops. I've worked security at a mall. Mm-hmm. I've did all kinds of stuff. Um, my last gig was security at a mall, but I was always doing photography okay. and graphic design while I was working there. And so um, I got to the point to where I'm like, okay, I'm not making a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I started making more money doing photography than I was working my nine to five, but I stayed there because I was so comfortable. Mm-hmm. I was not only comfortable, I was fearful. Mm-hmm. I was scared. I was dealing with imposter syndrome, basically feeling like I'm not good enough. That's one. Mm-hmm. Or even though, yeah, I'm good, but people are going to find me out. Like people are going to be like, well, he ain't as good as everybody say he is. Mm-hmm. And so that fear kept me hiding and I would say hiding just like get it and it wasn't even about the money I wasn't mm-hmm. making money like that but mm-hmm. it was just the fear mm-hmm. of having to depend wholly on mm-hmm. me to pay my bills and not okay this security job or so it's not a consistent paycheck and on top of that I'm like okay what if somebody steal my camera just stupid <laughs> stuff just thinking just insecure all, yeah. all kinds of excuses Mm-hmm. Just to keep me, you know, just because I wanted to be hidden. But it, it it came to a point, and I don't want to tell all my little business, but <laughs> I put a little bit of something out. I was working. I was doing T-shirts, mm-hmm. making T-shirts. I mm-hmm. told you I had all kinds of jobs. Mm-hmm. I got my check. When I say that thing was 300 and something dollars, <laughs> I said, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. 300 And it was probably, I think I may have worked maybe two weeks. Wow. Like, what can I do with that? 300? That's not even a car note. Right. And at the time, you know, I had a car note and, you know, I had all kinds of Mm -hmm. bills. And so I'm like, you know what, Calvin, you can't keep hiding. You got to step out on faith. And even now I know that, you know, you as a business owner, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's up, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's down. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I feel so much joy and so much freedom Mm -hmm. and not even just talking about financially, because a lot of times we put so much into the the financial and we're dying on the inside. And it's like, I don't want that. I don't Mm -hmm. want I want joy, not just happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, money can make you happy. It don't bring (laughs) you joy, but it it makes you happy. Right. But it's like, I really want to have joy and sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that was, that's, that's my, a little bit of my journey, just, Mm -hmm. you know, stepping out on faith and just, you know, relying on God Mm -hmm. and really, and really understanding that it's not about my gift. It's not about how great I am. It's because God is great. He lives on the inside Mm -hmm. of me, which is why I can do this. So I had to switch my thinking and really just recognize whose I am, mm-hmm. you know, and not depend on my talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how, how important is branding for um, people? Because there, there are a lot of people who are, I won't say a lot, but we have a, mm-hmm. a remnant of people who are thinking about making that next step into Ooh, yeah, following yeah, their yeah. passion, their dreams. But in doing that and pursuing that, how important is branding for them? It's Ultimately, it's very important. I tell everybody, especially my students, I tell them people see you before they hear you. That's right. If you cook, people see you before Mm -hmm. they taste the food. Mm -hmm. So it's about presentation because a lot of times we feel like we have to be at a certain level in order Mm -hmm. to to present ourselves a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's like if you do music. Mm-hmm. If Kirk Franklin, you don't see him posting selfies, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. because he understands who he is. Mm-hmm. And so when we understand who we are, mm-hmm. we're not going to settle for mediocre just because we're not at a point that we need to be. Right. It's like, no, get the pictures done. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even if you can't do a whole shoot, mm-hmm. get a, a basic head sh- headshot. Um, session mm-hmm. and use that. Get mm-hmm. branding, get marketing, like ch- try to make everything as cohesive 
and consistent mm-hmm. as possible mm-hmm. so that you can present yourself in a great way. Cause these gifts that we, that we are given mm-hmm. from God, like these gifts mm-hmm. are literally like he's trusting us. That's with right. It. He's That's right. He's given it's a responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so we have to be responsible with it and make sure that we are putting ourselves in the best light in our mm-hmm. gifts in the best light. So no matter what you have to do, like you, I know you may have to grind and, and pay a few little extra dollars in order to, you know, get a photo shoot or to get a logo yeah. or a website, but it is, it was an investment pay off. It's, it's an investment, investment for sure. It is. And that's part of the budget <laughs> budgeting that we were talking about um, earlier. You know, it's, you have mm-hmm. to be able to budget. And if, if you don't have that budget yet, it might not be time for you yet. Um, and, you, and that's okay. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to just glue and tape things mm. together and then say, okay, here I am. And people are not going to take you serious. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, uh, last question is how is life? How are you loving being an entrepreneur and, and being able to just be free Ooh. and creative in your own right and move the way you want to move? You ask the best questions. Okay. I'm thinking <laughs> like, Oh, okay. So I love it. It's freedom. Um, I dealt with depression and anxiety very, very bad. And I think a lot of it is because I'm such a creative. Mm -hmm. And when you as a creative feel stifled and Mm -hmm. feel like you can't be your full self, then that's when you get frustrated, Mm -hmm. you know, and that was me. I was very frustrated because it's like, okay, I'm working these jobs and I'm doing all this other stuff, but it's just for money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like security, if anybody know the type of person I am, I'm not a security, like tell me, pull up your pants, you know, stuff. I don't, (laughs) I like to laugh. I like to have fun. I like to create. I like to love. I lead with my heart. So, you know, I was in a place to where it was really dark because Mm -hmm. I couldn't be my full self. But now that I let that go Mm -hmm. and I'm really operating in my gift, it's like I'm waking up with a new like a, a sense of purpose like mm-hmm. just a drive yeah. you know so and it's up and down like don't y'all please don't <laughs> get it twisted as a business owner it is it gets difficult yeah but when you love what you do and you understand that what you do is what you're meant to do or that that's why you're here on this earth mm-hmm. like it's it's you all worth it. it it's yeah. worth it so I'm, yeah. I'm going through it you know like mm-hmm. especially with covid and mm-hmm. even now it's, it's better you know mm-hmm. it's better as far as like work you know mm-hmm. more people are booking shoots um versus when we were locked down in mm-hmm. quarantine and all this that other affects stuff you, that affects your oh, business it affects a lot major corporations let alone the smaller businesses oh my goodness yeah, yeah it was but I, I just really want to thank you for hanging out with me thank you you know so you'll much. be back thank you <laughs> and look anytime you need me i am here thank you for having me once again absolutely Trish. I appreciate you. this is mike photographer <laughs> calvin <laughs> finkley and his business is calvin finkley photography so make sure you check with him yes. and connect with him on social media even if, like he said, it's just a headshot, get that professional headshot in, lock that mm-hmm. in and put your best foot forward. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be right back. Perfect. Can you get your help real quick? You're going to ask you to do. I love it. Oh, yeah. That's all. <laughs> So, now I want you to kind of sit off the stool a little bit more so you can put like your hands right there. Yes. Up next, we have Derek Finkley. Welcome to Style with Trish. I'm your host, Trish Stanley, and today we are on location once again with none other than the awesome, amazing, and extremely talented 
Derek Finkley. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> you had the pleasure. We did a shoot today. Yes. And I had the pleasure of you being able to uh, style me. We kind of had fun. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. too. It was a lot of fun. It yes. was a lot of fun. Before we get into that information, just kind of uh, share with us uh, the name of your company and how you got started in styling or in the area of fashion. Absolutely. Well, my name is Derek Finkley. We have been in business for nine years now mm. um, and we're going on a whole decade next year. When I think about it, I'm like, that is crazy. <laughs> but I'm still 22, period. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still young, but um, I still have a um, business, a flourishing business. Not only do we do styling, but we do mm. image consulting. Okay. What is image consulting? You may ask. Image mm -hmm. consulting is basically getting the whole look together from hair, makeup mm -hmm. um, to the full styling. No, I don't do hair and makeup, but I do have the vision for it. Oh, yeah. So I do consider myself a visionary. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to actually physically do it to know how to create the look. Absolutely. Which is what you're an expert. And one of the things that I like that you do as a stylist is, and we still got to get this done, um, is I love the way you mix patterns. Ooh. You have the funkiest way of mixing patterns. Listen, Where does that come from? <laughs> I, don't, um, I think it comes a lot from my life experiences, to okay. be honest, because mm -hmm. a lot of my life has been mixed. Okay. Um, so... Putting together mixed prints is basically putting together unconventional prints and putting mm -hmm. them together. Mm -hmm. And if you look at life, that's how life is. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got all different types of experiences, which can be a prints, mm -hmm. and you put them together to make something beautiful. And that's what I do. Um, and I love that aspect of fashion because there's no rules. There's no mm -hmm. limits. Who says that houndstooth can't go with polka dot? Who mm -hmm. says that different prints can't go with each other? So that's how I think about it. And um, my mind just go different <laughs> places when it comes to mixing prints. It gets why. So is it something you visualize or is it something that you just, okay, I'm just going to put these two together and see how it looks. Or is it something like, oh, you know what? I think that print would be fly with this print. Yes. Okay. I visualize the first. And okay. sometimes I'm at first I'm mm -hmm. more comfortable, but I will be like, oh, I don't know if this will go. But I'm telling you, once you start trying different stuff, mm -hmm. you'll be able to be like, okay, this is good. And mm -hmm. this is different. And I feel like that's my niche. Mm -hmm. um, mixing prints is definitely a niche of mine because it's something that everybody can do. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -mm. And it's so um, it can be time consuming too because mm -hmm. you got to make sure that you get the right stuff together right, right. but it's something that i see first i see mm -hmm. it first and then i gotta kind of attack it because if i mm -hmm. don't i'm going to talk myself out of doing it <laughs> so now with, with, with the mixed pattern that you do the gift that you have do you have clients that come specifically say i need you to do this or do you have um or are you kind of pushing and persuading them to try this different look well a lot of people um they are kind of skeptical at mm -hmm. first, but they know that's what I do. They're mm -hmm. like, I know the thing that they say is they can do that. Like she can do that, but I don't know if I can do it. Right. And that's when I step in and be like, you can do what right. makes you think that you can't do it. Right. You know? So it's something that I have to sometimes push them into. And then mm -hmm. when they see it, they're like, I would have never put this together. Mm -hmm. I would have never put this together, but it's so fun when you can actually change a perspective on fashion mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you know, some people are just black and white, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. Right. But that's a trick to uh, mix and print as well. Mm -hmm. Like when you're starting and you don't know how to do it, start off with black and white. Yeah, It's the easiest thing. And the thing that kind of frustrates me a little bit it is that people love the word stylist or my stylist, um, but they're not always open to being directed by their stylist. Talk about it. <laughs> Listen. So it's, and so what has that experience been like? Because um, I've heard, seen and, and worked with people who say, I just want you to co-sign what I've already put together in my head. Correct. Um, so what has been your experience in that? Have you even had that experience? Absolutely. Listen, absolutely <laughs> I have. But one thing that I tapped into, which is very helpful now, I do advisory. Okay. I'm like, you may not want a full stylist, but I give you an option. I give you the package for advisories, mm -hmm. which mean I advise you. Mm -hmm. Because some people don't even want a stylist. They just want somebody to advise their advice. Okay. You know how you go into a room and you're like, girl, this this is what you think about this? Mm -hmm. It's pretty much some people don't want stylists. Some people just want the advice mm -hmm. to say, oh, I look good. Do this look good together? They mm -hmm. may not need the stylist, but I have worked with... Um, some people who wasn't the 
you know, easiest. <laughs> the easiest to work with. It was um, a process. But even in that, because I try to get the lessons out of everything. Right. So um, I kind of learned like everybody not going to like what you do, mm. but it's how you take what they're saying. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I had to learn as a stylist that everybody ain't going to like what you do and mm-hmm. you can't be offended. Right. You can't be mad right. when they're like, well, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Like you just got to pick your jaw up and keep it and moving. Keep it moving because somebody will. Somebody and that's will. in every field, really. Yes. Um, some people will and some people won't. Well, you've been graced to write a book. Tell oh, us about yeah. Yes. <laughs> Listen, What's the I title? have to put the what a woman wants, what a woman needs is mm-hmm. the uh, title of my book. And when I tell you, it didn't even take seven months to write the really? book. Really? Yes. Literally, it's a fr- my freshman pro- project. I do plan on writing some more, okay. but I wanted to give. Um, my clients, not just my clients, but people all over the world. I wanted to give them experience of having mm-hmm. a stylist without the stylist being there, mm-hmm. which means I give you um, tricks, little nooks, little grains of what mm-hmm. you can do um, to develop your personal style. Everybody mm-hmm. don't have personal style. Tri- do you know that? I know you no, know that. No, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a personal style, right. but it just needs to be developed. It needs to be developed. Yeah. <laughs> like Some people don't believe that they have what it takes to really customize their yeah. own style. Yeah. So I wanted to come up with something that... Um, really speaks to the modern day woman. Mm -hmm. You may not be an influencer. You may not be on a jet every Mm -hmm. week, but you have a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. You, this book is for the everyday woman. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that it's beneficial. Yeah. I I think it's great. One of the chapters you have in there is about confidence. Yes, And sometimes when you don't have, you haven't been exposed to people like my mother was fashion. My godmother was fashion, but some people didn't have that. Yeah. Um, And so you need to build up that confidence to be Mm -hmm. able to rock whatever looks that you have. One of the other chapters you have in there that I absolutely uh, love is accessories because that's one of my weaknesses. Accessorizing. (laughs) (laughs) Accessorizing. Um, But one of the things you said off camera that was very interesting to me because you have another chapter that's titled fragrance Mm -hmm. so tell it elaborate on that yes i like to say that fragrance is an accessory Mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't know that and i know you said it you was like that's interesting Mm -hmm. and i wanted to intrigue the mind like Mm -hmm. you don't just have to put on a bracelet and a necklace Mm -hmm. to be accessorized what Mm -hmm. you put on your body can be an accessory as well like you know when you go into different places and they're like oh girl i like your earrings i like Mm -hmm. your purse i like this but sometimes you walk into places and people like what you got on Mm -hmm. like what you smelling like you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so that's a conversation Mm -hmm. That's another thing that's in the chapter. We don't want to give away too many chapters. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) But that's one of the things that's in the um, book as well is Mm -hmm. statement pieces. Yeah. Um, Fragrance is a statement piece. Mm -hmm. Like when you walk, you want to make sure that you captivate the room with your smell. Mm -hmm. And some people are allergic. Like me. Come on. (laughs) So you have to use different, you know, tricks and different things, different levels of fragrance to do, um, to do that. But it definitely is an accessory Mm -hmm. that is very trendy now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you want to talk about too many chapters, but this is a very important chapter to me Mm -hmm. personally. Budget. Kind Come on. Break that down just just real quickly. Listen, budget is very essential, especially when you're building your closet, building your repertoire mm-hmm. of wardrobe, whatever mm-hmm. you do. Not even just that, but in life, mm-hmm. setting a budget. Mm-hmm. I have worked with um, clients who would be like, oh, I don't have a budget, which is fine. But mm-hmm. I do believe that you have to set a substantial budget yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Nobody. I mean, nobody don't know what your light bill mm-hmm. or whatever is looking mm-hmm. like. So you want to make sure that you keep your yourself on track mm-hmm. the budget has nothing to do with the other person like who mm-hmm. you're paying it has everything right. to do with you because it's coming out of your expenses mm-hmm. so you want to make sure that you have a budget that really keeps you on budget because sometimes we need that mm-hmm. we we, do, we definitely you, you need the parameter of, of yeah so but it was so fun working with you um on today uh it's just yeah. you just really just relaxed me during the shoot you made sure my hair was right and Absolutely. and all of that and i just thank you so much much for that you know this is not our this is not our last time oh definitely okay. not definitely not <laughs> as long as you know that um but you are available on social media right. um and our guests can see your information below yes make sure y'all join him make sure you join him on social media he does you do uh Facebook lives and Instagram lives and gives you were nuggets. On my yes, Instagram I was on yours. Lives. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and so make sure you follow him. He gives nuggets all along the way. But first and foremost, go and purchase his book. It is available to you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys, we will be right back. Welcome to Trisha's Treasures. This is where I share some of my favorite beloved products that I use on myself with you. 
All right, now, this is a tough Trish treasure for me to share because this is a, a really, really good one. And I don't want y'all to buy them out now that I'm sharing it with you. But this Latisse is a product that I use being one who wears lash extensions and when I'm not wearing lash extensions, I might do strips. Um, and so whenever I wanna give myself my lashes a break, as we all should, um, Latisse, this product is what I use to grow back my lashes. Now, this is an actual prescription and all you do is fill out the questionnaire um, and then you will, the, the doctor will send you your pres prescribed um, drops and what you do at night every night this is the drop and they provide you with these brushes and all you do is you you um apply the drops to the brush one brush per eye so you don't reuse these brushes one brush for each eye and you apply that every night at night time and i guarantee you within three weeks you will begin to see hair growth again in your lash line so don't forget Latisse, it is an absolute Trish treasure. Hang on. Hey guys, this is Trish Stanley. Catch up on season one of Style with Trish by going to trishstanley.com. If you are not able to catch the show on YouTube, make sure you go to my website, trishstanley.com and check out our podcast, trishstanley.com. Hi guys, it's Dr. Cassandra Parks Evans, affectionately known as Dr. San, and this is your segment of Let's Learn Love. Hi guys, it's Dr. Cassandra Parks Evans, and this is your Let's Learn Love segment for today. We're talking about meditation. Meditation can be very therapeutic and very beneficial to you. It helps center and calm you, and you know, that is much needed in the times of chaos today. So I'm going to give you a couple of simple tips that you can start with simple meditation and to be able to center yourself. When we think about meditation, what is the first thing we think of? We think of peacefulness. So we want something that's going to be peaceful to our eyes, something that is calming. So we're looking for blues. We're looking for greens, something that's going to center us. When it comes to auditory, we need something peaceful that is quiet. So we can be alone with our thoughts and we can also think about our breathing because breathing is an important part of meditation as well. We want to do it calmly. We want to do it smoothly. So when we put all those together, hopefully you'll get a meditation place that is good and natural for you. Let me know what you think about that. What is your meditation practices that you may have? So get in touch with me, contact me. And until then, love and blessings. I'd like to thank my guest today, none other than fashion stylist Derek Finkley, as well as my beloved photographer Calvin Finkley for joining me on today's show. Make sure you go check them out, check out their products, their services, uh, join their social media so you can follow them. They are a great crew to follow and to hire. I want to thank them, love them so much. And as I always say, love isn't love unless you give it away. Give some love away today. <laughs>